Hello and welcome to part three of the uh, my series of videos showing you how to make Alexa skills with Python. In today's video, we're going to be um, doing the uh, classic Hello World. Um, hopefully you've watched the other two videos. Yes, two videos. <laughs> and um, they haven't been too horribly confusing for you. Um, so we're going to go right into um, just we'll, what we intend to in this video is make the Alexa just say hello world. So very, very simple. Should be pretty straightforward. Um, so let's talk about uh, AWS Lambda. Uh, Lambda is an event-driven serverless computing platform provided by Amazon as part of the Amazon Web Services. It is a compute service that runs code in response to events and automatically manages the compute resources required by that code. A wonderful, very long quote from Wikipedia. You know, that's one of the things they always tell you in these slides and these tutorials is don't just throw up a very long quote up on the screen. <laughs> and they say, don't copy and paste things from Wikipedia. So that's uh, it's two fails in one. <laughs> but it sums it up nicely. Um, so earlier we talked about mapping the Alexa skill to Lambda. So that the AWS Lambda function, so it knows um, when to be triggered. And the Lambda function, which is nice, is that it's not running on our hardware. And we also don't have to provision resources. Um, each time it's triggered, it's ran on their servers. Um, it's a different kind of paradigm than maybe you're used to if you're using Flask or anything. Um, yeah, this, this definition is a little bit confusing, but it's actually very concise. Um, this whole serverless thing is a big revolution, and I really encourage you to take a look at it. I mean, at first I thought there was a lot of um, a lot of hype, but I'm really it's I'm really digging it now. Um, and I should point out on the side there should have been a slide for this, but um, in case you're confused, there are AWS lambdas are not the same as Python lambdas. Python lambdas are short little anonymous functions. Um, they're completely different. Actually, I've done videos on those, um, but this is different. This is AWS Lambda. So AWS Lambda, it's like this, this whole long thing I gave you, you're basically giving code to Amazon. And then when a certain event happens, they're going to execute that code and they're going to do that at scale. So they will, they will execute that code over and over and over again. Um, based on the number of requests they get. It's, yeah, it's hard to explain. I mean, yeah. Maybe I'll do another video where I get more into um, the, the serverless, but we're, I'm getting into the weeds. Sorry about that. Okay, so um, the Alexa skill kit is going to be the trigger that executes the code. This code is, uh, will be used, this code is gonna be using a helper template. So I wrote some kind of helper code to kind of clean things up. There's gonna be a link to that um, template and it's in the helper code in the video description. Um, so let's look at some code. Okay, uh, all right. Uh, so the Lambda functions, they start with um, a Lambda handler function, all right? Um, kind of thinking of it, think of it as like a main function, right? So you're gonna have this file that you're going to give to AWS Lambda, it's going to run that file. The first thing it's going to do when it runs that file is going to open up, it's going to run this function called Lambda Handler, okay? Lambda Handler is given two arguments. Make sure I'm not jumping ahead. Yes, it's given two arguments. It's being, it's given event and context um, for our purposes right now. Um, event is a dictionary, okay? So we're going to access that dictionary. So in event, there's re oops, there's request key, and then there's a type key. All right, what we're looking for is the re launch request. All right, and then we're going to go. We're going to return an on on launch function, or the result of the on launch function. All right, so let's go back and remember something from I think the very first video. Uh, remember that JSON is everywhere. Almost everything you're going to be dealing with is JSON. Um, and those objects, those JSON objects, are represented by Python dictionaries. All right. You're going to be seeing a lot of this. All right. Event. And then you've got a key. 
then another key, you're gonna see a lot of nested dictionaries, okay? Um, so the very first thing we're gonna do in this function here is we're gonna check to see if this dictionary within a dictionary, if this key has, um, well actually this isn't really, it, okay, well, whatever. <laughs> if this, 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 we're gonna see what kind of request we've received, okay? There's three different um, requests, standard requests you can get. You get a launch request, an intent request, and a session end request. Right now, we're gonna focus on the launch request, right? That's just gonna be the kind of the naked, um, if you just say, so we named our skill Dolly. We made our invocation name Dolly also. Now, if you say Alexa, open Dolly, that's going to send just a naked, just a launch request. There is no intent there. Let's see if that's right. Let's see my next screen. Yes, okay. As if we had an intent, so if you remember from, I think the last video, we made an intent that, that said, um, what is your favorite number? Then this one, this the value of this, the string that it contains would be an intent request. But we right now are just looking for a launch request. We are looking for a launch request. Here we go. Yeah. So yeah. So we're, we have a simple if statement that's looking for a string, and if it's found, then we're going to call this function and return its return value. Uh, oh yeah. So now we're kind of we're going back. I I skipped ahead again. <laughs> I should trust the slides more. Uh, a launch request is sent when a user invokes the skill with invocation name and no intent in our example here is Alexa open daily numerology all right when we receive a launch request an on launch request we're gonna call or when we, when we receive a launch request we're going to call on launch all right so on launch here's the on launch function right it also we're just gonna pass I think here we go we're just gonna pass all the information we know, basically. And the, what's the information we know in this function? We know that there's a variable called event, another variable called context. We're gonna pass everything to that other function. All right, we don't need to, we're just doing it. It's just for the tutorial, it's, it, it, it gets useful. Um, okay, so what does that do, okay? So it returns, it calls, once again, it calls another function and then returns that return value. So it's gonna call statement, and it's gonna give it two arguments, a string greetings and a string hello world, okay? In this function, we see our first helper function from the template, the little helper template that I made, um, and that's the statement function. This isn't something that's built into Alexa. This is something that I just made as a helper template. Um, so then I made custom and the reason why I made it custom is because it would help us um, help show you step by step how it works um, and also made it so that this function is only like one line instead of like a dozen lines that way we can take it piece by piece and walk step by step so we would make sure we understand what's happening in each step so hopefully that works out um, so that's where a warning comes um, if you haven't already felt like you got a little bit confused by me um, we're going to go down a bit of a rabbit hole um, you might need to watch this video a couple of times, sorry, um, but I assure you that it will make sense eventually. I'm kind of breaking things up into little pieces so I can, like I said, so you'll understand things step by step. So hopefully, um, hopefully it works. Hopefully my idea works here. <laughs> okay, statement is a simple helper function that builds a response. Uh, remember that Alexa responses, um, they respond with a spoken part and then the card part. The card part gets sent to your phone or it gets sent to the uh, web interface. And the spoken part is actually what it, what it says back to you. So you need to prepare both of those. And so here is um, our statement function. And what we're gonna do, be doing is making a little dictionary. We're gonna call it a speechlet. And so it's got a couple different parts. We've got an output speech and a card. And then we've got a should session end, all right? So right now we're just gonna, until we get into sessions later, we're just, all of our examples are gonna be saying um, the session should be ended. Um, sessions would allow you to 
have multiple interactions with the device. Um, all the example, all, the, all these initial examples are just going to be, you know, like if we had the intent of asking Dolly what her favorite number was, there's not really a follow up question to that. So our session is over, right? So if I say Alexa, ask Dolly, what is your favorite number? And Alexa asks Dolly and Dolly responds. And Alexa says, number seven is my favorite number. That's pretty much it. Our session, that was our session. Maybe we have other questions, but they're really a different session. We should start a new conversation with that. Okay, but what's important here is the building plain speech, and then we build a simple card, okay? In this function, we create a dictionary, and these dictionaries are gonna be returned as JSON objects. Um, so we give the key output speech, the value returned by build played speech, and we give the key uh, card, sorry, it's not very clear there, <laughs> the value returned by build simple card. Once again, this might be a little bit confusing once you touch it more, once you actually start writing some code or playing with a device, things are gonna to start to make more sense. And of course, as I said, we're saying the session to true or end session to true because we don't wanna have multiple interactions. Um, and then we give that dictionary to build response and then return the result. So you can see we're having a lot of nested functions. So one function is calling this one and it's, it's making these JSON objects and the one's gonna be building the response. Um, we're doing that once again we're not trying to make it more complicated. I'm trying to make it so we go step by step through it. So here we go. We've actually built our responses here. And this is basically what it would look like. Um, so let's deconstruct this function a little bit further because we have more helper functions that were in there. Remember, I'm, I'm using these helper functions so it's not one big block of text, one big block of code. Um, and also it helps because it's kind of doing the don't repeat yourself. It's a good thing, good thing. So um, we have a couple of functions here that are helper functions that are custom functions. Once again, these aren't um, functions that are built into Lambda. They are not functions that are built into um, Alexa. These are functions that I wrote in a simple little helper template. You can rewrite them. You could mess around with them. You could write your own. Just These are just an example of making things a little bit simpler. So let's look at the build the plain speech. So this actually was going to be building the speech. All right, what is Alexa going to say to you in response? And that's maybe in another video, we're going to get into the different ways that it can talk. But right now we are just going to be doing the plain text where you just give it a string and it just speaks that string. All right, so in this build plain speech, we're gonna tell it, you know, that's all we want is plain speech. And then we're gonna actually give it the text, which is the body, which is, you know, could be a uh, hello world. And then we're gonna return that speech. Um, we're gonna build the card. Um, this card is almost exactly the same thing as a previous one, but cards need titles, all right? So you make sure you have a title for it. So um, we're totally cheating and we're just saying, I think, uh, oh no, we're not. No, no, it was just a simple card type because there's multiple card types. We actually did include a title and we have a body. So it's gonna make the little graphical card. And then we're gonna build the response. This is a bit of a boilerplate. Um, so if you went back, whoop, here we go. So we uh, build that speech lit, which is basically both the spoken part and the card. And then we give it to this build response, which is just kind of a boilerplate thing. Almost everybody's sample code, at least with Python, has basically a, a build response thing that's just kind of a boilerplate. Um, and it's just gonna give it a version session attributes, which we don't have to worry about right now, we'll worry about later. Um, and then we're gonna give it the response. Um, this may look very complicated. Like I said, we're kind of going down a rabbit hole. Um, when you look at the code and you kind of step through it, Hopefully it will make more sense to you. And once again, this is just helper code that I wrote to help teach. Um, so Alexa will say out loud, hello world, and it will create a graphical card titled greetings with a body of hello world. 
And that's what the statement is going to do. Okay. We, in this little tutorial, we have made a uh, function. We've gotten our little Lexus skill. Now it can say, hello world, um, which I think is kind of the uh, required thing for every first program, right? I think it's like legally required or something. Thank you for uh, watching. Um, I'll have more videos in this series and hopefully we didn't go too far down the rabbit hole. If you were totally confused, take a look at the code, look at the link down below and um, yeah, hopefully it will make more sense. Good luck. Thank you for watching.